Chapter 3 If then you were raised with Messiah, seek the matters which are above, where Messiah is, seated at the right hand of Elohim. Mind the matters above, not those on the earth, for you have died, and your life has been hidden with Messiah and Elohim. When the Messiah, who is our life, is manifested, then you also shall be manifested with him in esteem. Therefore put to death your members which are on the earth, whoring and uncleanness, passion, evil desire, and greed of gain, which is idolatry. Because of these, the wrath of Elohim is coming upon the sons of disobedience, in which you also once walked when you lived in them. But now also put off all these, displeasure, wrath, evil, blasphemy, filthy talk from your mouth. Do not lie to each other, since you have put off the old man with his practices, and have put on the new one, who is renewed in knowledge according to the likeness of him who created him. Where there is not Greek and Yahudi, circumcised and uncircumcised, foreigner, Scythian, slave, free, but Messiah is all and in all. Therefore, as chosen ones of Elohim, set apart and beloved, put on compassion, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, patience, bearing with one another and forgiving each other. If anyone has a complaint against another, indeed, as Messiah forgave you, so also should you. But above all these, put on love, which is a bond of the perfection, and let the peace of Elohim rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be filled with thanks. Let the word of Messiah dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing with pleasure in your hearts to the Master in psalms and songs of praise and spiritual songs. And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Master Yeshua, giving thanks to Elohim the Father through Him. Wives, subject yourself to your own husbands as is proper in the Master. Husbands, love your wives and do not be bitter toward them. Children, obey your parents in all, for this is well-pleasing to the Master. Fathers, do not provoke your children, lest they become discouraged. Servants, obey your masters according to the flesh in all respects, not with eye service as men-pleasers, but in sincerity of heart, fearing Elohim. And whatever you do, do it heartily as to the master and not to men, knowing that from the master you shall receive the reward of the inheritance. It is the master, Messiah, you serve. But he who does wrong shall be repaid for the wrong which he has done, and there is no partiality. Chapter 4 Masters, give your servants what is righteous and fair, knowing that you also have a master in the heavens. Continue in prayer, watching therein with thanksgiving, praying at the same time also for us, that Elohim would open to us a door for the word, to speak the secret of Messiah for which I am also in chains, so that I make it clear as I should speak, walk in wisdom towards those who are outside redeeming the time. Let your word always be with favor, seasoned with salt, so that you know how you ought to answer each one. Tukikos, who is a beloved brother, a true servant and a fellow servant in the Master, shall give you all the news about me. I am sending him to you for this purpose, to know your circumstances and to encourage your hearts. With one Simos, a true and beloved brother who is one of you, they shall let you know all the news here. Aristikos, my fellow prisoner, greets you with Marcos, the relative of Barnaba, about whom you received instructions. If he comes to you, welcome him. Also Yahshua, who is called Justice. These are my only fellow workers for the reign of Elohim, who are of the circumcision, who were to me a comfort. Epaphras, who is one of you, a servant of Messiah, greets you, always wrestling for you in prayers so that you stand perfect and complete in all the desire of Elohim. For I bear him witness that he has a deep concern for you, and for those who are in Laodicea, and those in Hierapolis. Lucas, the beloved physician, and Demas greet you. Greet the brothers in Laodicea, and Nympha, and the assembly that is in his house. And when this letter is read among you, see that it is read also in the assembly of the Laodiceans, and that you likewise read the letter from Laodicea. 
and say to Archippus, See to the service which you have received in the Master so that you complete it. This greeting is in my own hand. Shaul, remember my chains. Favor be with you. Amen. The Book of First Thessalonians Taz Lonakim Aleph Chapter 1 Shaul and Silas and Timotheus to the assembly of the Thessalonians in Elohim the Father and the Master Yeshua Messiah favor to you and peace from Elohim our Father and the Master Yeshua Messiah. We give thanks to Elohim always for you all, making mention of you in our prayers, remembering without ceasing your work of the belief and the labor of love and the endurance of the expectation in our Master Yeshua Messiah in the presence of our Elohim and Father, knowing, brothers, beloved by Elohim, that you were chosen, because our good news did not come to you in word only, but also in power and in the set-apart spirit and in entire confirmation, as you know what kind of men we were among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Master, having received the word in much pressure with joy of the set-apart spirit so that you became an example to all who believe in Macedonia and Acacia. For from you the word of the Master has sounded forth, not only in Macedonia and Acacia, but also in every place your belief toward Elohim has gone out, so that it is unnecessary for us to say whatever. For they themselves report what kind of reception we had with you, and how you turned to Elohim from idols to serve the living and true Elohim and to wait for His Son from the heavens, whom He raised from the dead, Yahshua, who is delivering us from the wrath to come. Chapter 2 For you yourselves know, brothers, that our coming to you was not in vain, but having suffered before and having been mistreated at Philippi, as you know, we were bold in our Elohim to speak to you the good news of Elohim in much struggle, for the appeal we make does not come from delusion, nor from uncleanness, nor from deceit. But as we have been approved by Elohim to be entrusted with the good news, so we speak, not as pleasing men, but Elohim who proves our hearts. For we never came with a word of flattery, as you know, nor with a cloak for greed, Elohim is witness, nor were we looking for praise from men, not from you nor from others, though we could have been a burden to you as emissaries of Messiah. But we were gentle in your midst, like a nursing mother warmly loving her own children. So having a tender affection for you, we were well pleased to share with you not only the good news of Elohim, but also our own lives, because you have become beloved to us. For you remember, brothers, our toil and hardship for laboring night and day, in order not to burden any of you. We proclaim to you the good news of Elohim. You are witnesses, Elohim also. How set apart and righteously and blamelessly we behaved ourselves among you who believe, even as you know how each one of you, as a father to his children, encouraging and comforting and bearing witness to you, that you would walk worthily of Elohim, who is calling you into his own reign and esteem. And because of this we thank Elohim without ceasing, that when you received the word of Elohim, which you heard from us, you welcomed it not as the word of men, but as it is truly the word of Elohim, which also works in you who believe. For you, brothers, became imitators of the assemblies of Elohim, which are in Yehuda, in Messiah Yahshua, because you also suffered the same treatment from your own countrymen, as they also from the Yahudim, who killed both the master Yahshua and their own prophets, and have persecuted us, and who displease Elohim and are hostile to all men, forbidding us to speak to the nations that they might be saved, so as to fill up their sins always. But the wrath has come upon them to the utmost. But we, brothers, having been taken away from you for a short while, in presence, not in heart, were much more eager trying to see your face with much longing. We would therefore have come to you, I indeed Shaul, more than once, but Satan hindered us. For what is our expectation or joy or crown of boasting? Is it not even you? before our master Yeshua Messiah at his coming. 
for you are our esteem and joy. Chapter 3 So when we could no longer stand it, we thought it good to be left in Athens alone, and sent Timotheus, our brother and servant of Elohim, and our fellow worker in the good news of Messiah, to establish you and encourage you concerning your belief, that no one should be unsettled by these pressures. For you yourselves know that we are appointed to this. For indeed we did inform you beforehand, when we were with you, that we would suffer pressure, and so it came to be. As you know, because of this, when I could no longer stand it, I sent to find out about your belief, lest the trying one might have tried you, and our labor should be in vain. But now that Timotheos has come to us from you, and having brought us good news of your belief and love, and that you always have good remembrance of us, longing to see us as we also to see you. Therefore, brothers, in all our pressure and distress, we were encouraged concerning you by your belief, because we now live, if you stand fast in the Master. For what thanks are we able to return to Elohim for you? For all the joy with which we rejoice for your sake in the presence of our Elohim, night and day praying exceedingly to see your face and make complete what is lacking in your belief. And our Elohim and Father himself and our Master Yeshua Messiah direct our way to you. And the Master make you increase and overflow in love to each other and to all, as we also do to you, to establish your hearts blameless in set-apartness before our Elohim and Father, at the coming of our Master Yeshua Messiah, with all his set-apart ones. Chapter 4 For the rest then, brothers, we beg you and call upon you in the Master Yeshua, that as you receive from us how you should walk, and to please Elohim you should excel still more. For you know what commands we gave you through the Master Yeshua. For this is the desire of Elohim, your set-apartness, that you should abstain from whoring, that each one of you should know how to possess his own vessel in set-apartness and respect, not in passion of lust, like the nations who do not know Elohim, not to overstep and take advantage of his brother in this matter, because the Master is the revenger of all such, as we indeed said to you before, and earnestly warned. For Elohim did not call us to uncleanness, but in set-apartness. Therefore, he who rejects this does not reject man, but Elohim, who also gives us his set-apart spirit. And it is not necessary to write to you about brotherly love, for you yourselves are taught by Elohim to love one another. For in fact, you do so toward all the brothers who are in all Macedonia. But we call upon you, brothers, that you do so more and more, and to make it your ambition to live peaceably, and to attend to your own, and to work with your own hands, as we commanded you, so that you behave decently towards those who are outside, and not be in any need. Now, brothers, we do not wish you to be ignorant concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you be sad as others who have no expectation. For if we believe that Yeshua died and rose again, so also Elohim shall bring with him those who sleep in Yeshua. For this we say to you by the word of the Master, that we the living who are left over at the coming of the Master shall in no way go before those who are asleep, because the Master himself shall come down from heaven with a shout, with the voice of a chief messenger, and with the trumpet of Elohim, and the dead in Messiah shall rise first. Then we, the living who are left over, shall be caught away together with them in the clouds to meet the Master in the air. And so we shall always be with the Master. So then, encourage one another with these words. Chapter 5 Now, brothers, as to the times and the seasons, you do not need to be written to, for you yourselves know very well that the day of Yahuwah comes as a thief in the night. For when they say, Peace and safety, then suddenly destruction comes upon them, as labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. But you, brothers, are not in darkness, so that this day should overtake you as a thief. For you are all sons of light and sons of the day. We are not of the night, nor of darkness. So then we should not sleep as others do, but we should watch and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. But we who are of the day should be sober, putting on the breastplate of belief and love, 
and as a helmet the expectation of deliverance. Because Elohim did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain deliverance through our Master Yahshua Messiah, who died for us, so that we, whether awake or asleep, should live together with Him. Therefore encourage one another and build up one another as indeed you do. But brothers, we beg you to know those who labor among you and are over you in the Master and admonish you, and to hold them in the highest regard and love because of their work. Be at peace among yourselves. And we appeal to you, brothers, warn those who are disorderly. Encourage the faint-hearted. Uphold the weak. Be patient with all. See that no one renders evil for evil to anyone, but always pursue what is good, both for yourselves and for all. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In all circumstances give thanks, for this is the desire of Elohim and Messiah Yahshua for you. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophecies. Prove them all. Hold fast what is good. Keep back from every form of wickedness. And the Elohim of peace himself set you completely apart and your entire spirit and being and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Master Yahshua Messiah. He who calls you is trustworthy, who also shall do it. Brothers, pray for us. Greet all the brothers with a set-apart kiss. I charge you by the Master that this letter be read to all the set-apart brothers. The favor of our Master, Yeshua Messiah, be with you. Amen. The Book of Second Thessalonians Taz Lonakim Bet Chapter 1 Shaul and Silas and Timotheos To the assembly of the Thessalonians in Elohim our Father and the Master, Yeshua Messiah, Favor to you and peace from Elohim our Father and the Master Yahshua Messiah. We ought to give thanks to Elohim always for you, brothers, as it is proper because your belief grows exceedingly and the love every one of you has for each other is increasing so that we ourselves boast of you among the assemblies of Elohim for your endurance and belief in all your persecutions and afflictions which you are bearing. Clear evidence of the righteous judgment of Elohim in order for you to be counted worthy of the reign of Elohim, for which you also suffer, since Elohim shall rightly repay with affliction those who afflict you, and to give you who are afflicted rest with us, when the Master Yeshua is revealed from heaven with his mighty messengers, in flaming fire, taking vengeance on those who do not know Elohim, and on those who do not obey the good news of our Master Yeshua Messiah, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Master and from the esteem of His strength. When He comes to be esteemed in His set-apart ones and to be admired among all those who believe in that day, because our witness to you was believed. To this end, we always pray for you that our Elohim would count you worthy of this calling and complete all the good pleasure of goodness and the work of belief with power so that the name of our Master Yahshua Messiah is esteemed in you, and you in Him, according to the favor of our Elohim and the Master Yahshua Messiah. Chapter 2 As to the coming of our Master Yahshua Messiah and our gathering together to Him, we ask you, brothers, not to become easily unsettled in mind or troubled, either by spirit or by word or by letter, as if from us, as if the day of Yahuwah has come. Let no one deceive you in any way, because the falling away is to come first, and the man of lawlessness is to be revealed, the son of destruction, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called Elohim, or that is worshipped, so that he sits as Elohim in the dwelling place of Elohim, showing himself that he is Elohim. Do you not remember that I told you this while I was still with you? And now you know what restrains for him to be revealed in his time. For the secret of lawlessness is already at work, only until he who now restrains comes out of the midst. And then the lawless one shall be revealed, whom the master shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and bring to naught with the manifestation of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan, with all power and signs and wonders of falsehood, and with all deceit of unrighteousness in those perishing, because they did not receive the love of the truth 
in order for them to be saved. And for this reason, Elohim sends them a working of delusion for them to believe the falsehood in order that all should be judged who did not believe the truth but have delighted in the unrighteousness. But we ought to give thanks to Elohim always for you, brothers, beloved by the Master, because Elohim from the beginning chose you to be saved in set apartness of spirit and belief in the truth unto which he called you by our good news for the obtaining of the esteem of our Master Yeshua Messiah. So then, brothers, Stand fast and hold the traditions which you were taught, whether by word or by our letter. And our Master, Yeshua Messiah himself, and our Elohim and Father, who has loved us and given us everlasting encouragement and good expectation through favor, encourage your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. Chapter 3 For the rest, brothers, pray for us so that the word of Yahuwah spreads rapidly and be praised as also with you, and that we might be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men, for not all have belief. But the Master is trustworthy, who shall establish you and guard you from the wicked one. And we trust in the Master as to you, both that you do and shall do what we command you. And the Master direct your hearts into the love of Elohim and into the endurance for Messiah, but we command you, brothers, in the name of our Master Yeshua Messiah, that you withdraw from every brother who walks disorderly and not according to the tradition which you received from us. For you yourselves know how you ought to imitate us. For we were not disorderly among you, nor did we eat anyone's bread without paying for it, but worked with labor and toil night and day in order not to burden any of you, not because we do not have authority, but to make ourselves an example for you to imitate us. For even when we were with you, we commanded you this, If anyone does not wish to work, neither let him eat. For we hear of some among you walking disorderly, not working at all, but are busybodies. But we command and urge such through our master Yeshua Messiah to settle down, work, and eat their own bread. And you, brothers, do not grow weary in doing good. And if anyone does not obey our word in this letter, note that one, and do not keep company with him so that he is put to shame. However, do not regard him as an enemy, but admonish him as a brother. And the master of peace himself give you peace always in every way, that the master be with you all. The greeting of Shaul with my own hand, which is a sign in every letter. Thus I write, The favor of our master, Yeshua Messiah, be with you all. Amen. The Book of Titus Titos. Chapter 1. Shaul, a servant of Elohim and an emissary of Yeshua Messiah, according to the belief of Elohim's chosen ones and knowledge of the truth according to reverence, in expectation of everlasting life, which Elohim, who does not lie, promised before times of old, but in its own times has manifested his word through preaching, with which I was entrusted according to the command of Elohim our Savior to Titos, a genuine child according to our common belief, favor, compassion, peace from Elohim the Father and the Master, Yeshua Messiah, our Savior. The reason I left you in Crete was that you should straighten out what was left undone and appoint elders in every city as I commanded you. If anyone is unreprovable, the husband of one wife, having believing children, not accused of loose behavior or unruly, for an overseer has to be unreprovable as a managing one of Elohim, not self-pleasing, not wroth, not given to wine, no brawler, not greedy for filthy gain, but kind to strangers, a lover of what is good, sensible, righteous, set apart, self-controlled, clinging to the trustworthy word according to the teaching in order to be able to both encourage by sound teaching and to convict those who oppose it. For there are many unruly men, senseless talkers and deceivers, especially those of the circumcision, whose mouths have to be stopped, who upset entire households, teaching what they should not teach for the sake of filthy gain. One of them, a prophet of their own, said, Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, lazy gluttons. This witness is true. Therefore rebuke them sharply in order for them to be sound in belief 
not paying attention to Yahudi fables and commands of men who turn from the truth. Indeed, all matters are clean to the clean, but to those who are defiled and unbelieving, no matter is clean, but both their mind and conscience are defiled. They profess to know Elohim, but in works they deny Him, being abominable and disobedient and unfit for any good work. Chapter 2 But you, speak what is fitting for sound teaching. The older men are to be sober, serious, sensible, sound in belief, in love, in endurance. The older women, likewise, are to be set apart in behavior, not slanderers, not given to much wine, teachers of what is good, in order for them to train the young women to love their husbands, to love their children, to be sensible, blameless, workers at home, good, subject to their own husbands, in order that the word of Elohim is not evil spoken of. Likewise, urge the young men to be sensible. Show yourself to them an example of good works in all matters. In teaching, show uncorruptness, seriousness, soundness of speech beyond reproach, in order that the opponent is put to shame, having no evil word to say about you. Servants should be subject to their own masters, to be well-pleasing in every way, not back-talking, not stealing, but showing all good trustworthiness, so that they adorn the teaching of Elohim our Savior in every way. For the saving gift of Elohim has appeared to all men, instructing us to renounce wickedness and worldly lusts, and to live sensibly, righteously, and reverently in the present age, looking for the blessed expectation and esteemed appearance of the great Elohim and our Savior, Yeshua Messiah, who gave Himself for us to redeem us from all lawlessness and to cleanse for Himself a people, His own possession, ardent for good works. Speak these matters, urge and convict with all authority. Let no one despise you. Chapter 3 Remind them to be subject to rulers and authorities, to obey, to be ready for every good work, not to slander anyone, not to be quarrelsome, to be gentle, showing all meekness to all men. For we ourselves were also once foolish, disobedient, led astray, serving various lusts and pleasures, living in evil and envy, being hated and hating one another. But when the kindness and the love of Elohim our Savior toward man appeared, he saved us, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to His compassion, through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the set-apart Spirit, which He poured out on us richly through Yahshua Messiah our Savior, that having been declared right by His favor, we should become heirs according to the expectation of everlasting life. Trustworthy is the Word, and in this regard I wish you to strongly affirm that those who have believed in Elohim should keep their minds on maintaining good works. This is good and profitable to men. But keep away from foolish questions and genealogies and strife and quarrels about the Torah, for they are unprofitable and useless. Reject a divisive man after the first and second warning, knowing that such a one has been perverted and sins, being self-condemned. When I shall send Artemis to you, or Tukikos, do your best to come to me at Nicopolis, for I have decided to spend the winter there. Do your best to send Zenos, the lawyer, and Apollos on their journey, so that they lack none at all. And our brothers should also learn to maintain good works, to meet urgent needs, so that they shall not be without fruit. All those with me greet you. Greet those who love us in the belief. Favor be with you all. Amen. The Book of Philemon, Philemon, Chapter 1 Shaul, a prisoner of Messiah Yahshua, and Timotheos, the brother, to Philemon, our beloved one and fellow worker, and Apophia, our sister, and Archippos, our fellow soldier, and the assembly of your house, favor to you and peace from Elohim our Father and the Master Yahshua Messiah. I always thank my Elohim when mention you in my prayers hearing of your love and the belief which you have toward the Master Yahshua and toward all the set-apart ones, so that the sharing of your belief might become working in the knowledge of all the good which is in you toward Messiah Yahshua. For we have much joy and encouragement in your love, 
because the tender affections of the set-apart ones have been refreshed by you, brother. Therefore, although I have much boldness in Messiah to command you what is fitting, because of love I rather appeal, being such a one as Shaul, the aged, and now also a prisoner of Yeshua Messiah, I appeal to you for my child Onesimus, whom I brought forth while in my chains, who formerly was of no use to you, but now is of good use to you and to me, whom I sent back to you and receive him, that is, my own tender affections, whom I wish to keep with me, that on your behalf he might serve me in my chains for the good news. But without your opinion, I wish to do none at all, so that your good deed should not be by the way of necessity, but voluntary. For he parted from you for a while, possibly because of this, so that you might have him back forever, no longer as a slave, but more than a slave, as a beloved brother, especially to me, and how much more to you, both in the flesh and in the master. So if you regard me as your partner, receive him as you would me. But if he has wronged you or owes you whatever, put that on my account. I, Shaul, wrote with my own hand, I shall repay, not to mention to you that you indeed owe yourself to me also. Yes, brother, let me derive pleasure from you in the master, refresh my tender affections in the master. Trusting in your obedience, I wrote to you, knowing that you shall do even more than I say, and at the same time also prepare a place for me to stay, for I trust that through your prayers I shall be given to you. Epaphros, my fellow prisoner of me and Messiah Yeshua, greets you, and Marcos, Aristikos, Demas, Lucas, my fellow workers, the favor of our master Yeshua Messiah be with your spirit. Amen. The Book of Hebrews, Ibrim, Chapter 1 Elohim, having of old spoken in many portions and many ways to the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken us by the Son, whom he has appointed heir of all, through whom also he made the ages, who being in the brightness of the esteem and the exact representation of his substance and sustaining all by the word of his power, having made a cleansing of our sins through himself, sat down at the right hand of the greatness on high, having become so much better than the messengers, as he inherited a more excellent name than them. For to which of the messengers did he ever say, You are my son, today I have brought you forth. And again, I shall be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And when he again brings the firstborn into the world, he says, let all the messengers of Elohim do reverence to him. And of the messengers indeed, he says, Who is making his messengers spirits and his servants a flame of fire? But to the Son, he says, Your throne, O Elohim, is forever and ever. A scepter of straightness is the scepter of your reign. You have loved righteousness and hated lawlessness. Because of this, Elohim, your Elohim, has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companions. And you, Master, did found the earth in the beginning, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They shall perish, but you remain, and they shall all grow old like a garment, and like a mantle you shall fold them up, and they shall be changed. But you are the same, and your years shall not fail. And to which of the messengers did he ever say, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet? Are they not all serving spirits, sent out to attend those who are about to inherit deliverance? Chapter 2 Because of this, we have to pay more attention to what we have heard, lest we drift away. For if the word spoken through messengers proved to be firm, and every transgression and disobedience received a right reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a deliverance, which first began to be spoken by the Master, who was confirmed to us by those that heard. Elohim also bearing witness both with signs and wonders, with various miracles and gifts of the set-apart spirit, distributed according to his own desire. For it is not to messengers that he has subjected the world to come, concerning which we speak. But somewhere one has witnessed, saying, What is man that you remember him, or the son of man that you look after him? You have made him a little lower than Elohim, you have crowned him with esteem and respect, 
and set him over the works of your hands. You have put all in subjection under his feet. For in that he put all in subjection under him, he left none that is not subjected to him. But now we do not yet see all subjected to him, but we do see him who was made for a little while lower than the messengers. Because of the suffering of death, crowned with esteem and respect, that by the favor of Elohim he should taste death for everyone. For it was fitting for him, because of whom all are and through whom all are, in bringing many sons to esteem to make the prince of their deliverance perfect through sufferings. For both he who sets apart and those who are being set apart are all of one, for which reason he is not ashamed to call them brothers, saying, I shall announce your name to my brothers in the midst of the congregation, I shall sing praise to you. And again, I shall put my trust in him. And again, see I and the children whom Elohim gave me. Therefore, since the children share in flesh and blood, he himself similarly shared in the same, so that by means of his death, he might destroy him, having the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver those who throughout life were held in slavery by fear of death. For doubtless, he does not take hold of messengers, but he does take hold of the seed of Abraham. So in every way he had to be made like his brothers in order to become a compassionate and trustworthy high priest in matters related to Elohim to make atonement for the sins of the people. For in what he had suffered, himself being tried, he is able to help those who are tried. Chapter 3 Therefore, said apart brothers, Partakers of the heavenly calling, closely consider the emissary and high priest of our confession, Messiah Yeshua, who was trustworthy to him who appointed him, as also Moshe in all his house. For this one has been deemed worthy of more esteem than Moshe, as much as he who built the house enjoys more respect than the house. For every house is built by someone, but he who built all is Elohim." And Moshe indeed was trustworthy in all his house as a servant for a witness of what would be spoken later, but Messiah as a son over his own house, whose house we are if we hold fast the boldness and the boasting and the expectation firm to the end. Therefore, as the set-apart spirit says, Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion, in the day of trial in the wilderness, when your fathers tried me, proved me and saw my works forty years. Therefore I was grieved with that generation and said, They always go astray in their heart, and they have not known my ways, as I swore in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest. Look out, brothers, lest there be in any of you a wicked heart of unbelief in falling away from the living Elohim. But encourage one another daily, while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened by the deceivableness of sin. For we have become partakers of Messiah if we hold fast the beginning of our trust firm to the end, while it is said, Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. For who, having heard, rebelled? Was it not all who came out of Mitzrayim led by Moshe? And with whom was he grieved forty years? Was it not with those who sinned, whose corpses fell in the wilderness? And to whom did he swear that they would not enter into his rest, but to those who did not obey? So we see that they were unable to enter in because of unbelief. Chapter 4 Therefore, since a promise remains of entering into his rest, let us fear lest any of you seem to have come short of it. For indeed the good news was brought to us as well as to them, but the word which they heard did not profit them, not having been mixed with belief in those who heard it. For we who have believed do enter into that rest, as he said, As I swore in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest. And yet his works have come into being from the foundation of the world. For somewhere he has said thus about the seventh day, And Elohim rested on the seventh day from all his works. And in this again, if they shall enter into my rest, since then it remains for some to enter into it. And those who formerly received the good news did not enter in because of disobedience. He again defines a certain day, today, saying through David so much later as it has been said, Today if you hear his voice, 
Do not harden your hearts. For if Yahshua had given them rest, he would not have spoken of another day after that. So there remains a Sabbath keeping for the people of Elohim. For the one, having entered into his rest, has himself also rested from his works, as Elohim rested from his own. Let us therefore do our utmost to enter into that rest, lest anyone fall after the same example of disobedience. For the word of Elohim is living and working, sharper than any two-edged sword, cutting through even to the dividing of being and spirit, and of joints and marrow, and able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all are naked and laid bare before the eyes of him with whom is our account. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Yahshua, the Son of Elohim, let us hold fast our confession, for we do not have a high priest unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who was tried in all respects as we are, apart from sin. Therefore, let us come boldly to the throne of favor in order to receive compassion and find favor for timely help. Chapter 5 For every priest taken from among men is appointed on behalf of men in matters relating to Elohim to offer both gifts and offerings for sins, being able to have a measure of feeling for those not knowing and being led astray, since he himself is also surrounded by weakness. And on account of this, he has to offer for sins. As for the people, so also for himself. And no one obtains the esteem for himself, but he who is called by Elohim, even as Aharon was. So also the Messiah did not extol himself to become high priest, but it was he who said to him, You are my son, today I have brought you forth. And also says in another place, You are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and petitions with strong crying and tears to him who was able to save him from death, and was heard because of his reverent fear, though being a son, he learned obedience by what he suffered, and having been perfected, he became the causer of everlasting deliverance to all those obeying him. Having been designated by Elohim a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek, concerning whom we have much to say and hard to explain, since you have become dull of hearing. For indeed, although by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first elements of the words of Elohim, and you have become such as need milk and not solid food. For everyone partaking of milk is inexperienced in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But solid food is for the mature, whose senses have been trained by practice to discern both good and evil. Chapter 6 Therefore, having left the word of the beginning of the Messiah, let us go on to perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of belief toward Elohim, of the teaching of immersions and of laying on of hands and of resurrection of the dead and of everlasting judgment. And this we shall do if Elohim indeed permits, for it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift and have become partakers of this set-apart spirit and have tasted the good word of Elohim and the powers of the age to come and fall away to renew them again to repentance, having impaled for themselves the son of Elohim again and put him to open shame. For ground that is drinking the rain often falling on it and is bearing plants fit for those by whom it is tilled receives blessing from Elohim. But if it brings forth thorns and thistles, it is rejected and near to being cursed, and ends up by being burned. But although we speak in this way, beloved, we are persuaded concerning you of better matters which possess deliverance. For Elohim is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love which you have shown toward his name, and that you have attended to the set-apart ones and still attend. And we desire that each one of you show the same eagerness to the entire confirmation of expectation until the end, in order that you do not become sluggish, but imitate those who through belief and patience inherit the promises. For Elohim, having promised Abraham, since he could swear by no one greater, swore by himself, saying, Truly, blessing I shall bless you, 
and increasing I shall increase you. And so, after being patient, he obtained the promise. For men do indeed swear by the one greater, and an oath for confirmation is for them an end of all dispute. In this way, Elohim, resolving to show even more clearly to the heirs of promise the unchangeableness of his purpose, confirmed it by an oath, so that by two unchangeable matters in which it is impossible for Elohim to lie, we might have strong encouragement, we who have fled for refuge to lay hold of the expectations set before us, which we have as an anchor of the life, both safe and firm, and entering into that within the veil, where Yahshua has entered as a forerunner for us, having become high priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. Chapter 7 For this Melchizedek, sovereign of Shalem, priest of the Most High Elohim, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the sovereigns, and blessed him, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, his name being translated indeed first, Sovereign of Righteousness, and then also Sovereign of Shalom, that is, Sovereign of Peace. Without father, without mother, without genealogy, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but having been made like the Son of Elohim, remains a priest for all time. Now see how great this one was to whom even the ancestor Abraham gave a tenth of the choicest booty. And truly, those who are of the sons of Levi, who received the priesthood, have a command to receive tithes from the people according to the Torah, that is, from their brothers, though they have come from the loins of Abraham. However, the one whose genealogy is not derived from them received tithes from Abraham, and blessed the one who held the promises. And it is beyond all dispute that the lesser is blessed by the better, and here it is men who die that receive tithes. But there it is, someone of whom it is witnessed that he lives. And one might say that through Abraham, even Levi, who received tithes, gave tithes. For he was still in the loins of his father when Melchizedek met him. Truly then, if perfection were through Levitical priesthood, for under it the people were given the Torah, why was there still need for another priest to arise according to the order of Melchizedek, and not be called according to the order of Aharon? For the priesthood being changed, of necessity there takes place a change of law also. For he of whom this is said belongs to another tribe, from which no one had attended at the slaughter place. For it is perfectly clear that our master arose from Yehuda, a tribe about which Moshe never spoke of concerning priesthood. And this is clearer still, if another priest arises in the likeness of Melchizedek, who has become, not according to the Torah a fleshly command, but according to the power of an endless life. For he does witness, You are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. For there is indeed a setting aside of the former command, because of its weakness and unprofitableness. For the Torah perfected not, but the bringing in of a better expectation through which we draw near to Elohim, and it was without an oath. For they indeed became priests without an oath, but he became priests with an oath by him who said to him, Yahuwah has sworn and shall not regret, you are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. By as much as this, Yahshua has become a guarantor of a better covenant. And indeed, those that became priests were many, because they were prevented by death from continuing. But he, because he remains forever, has an unchangeable priesthood. Therefore he is able to save completely those who draw near to Elohim through him, ever living to make intercession for them. For it was fitting that we should have such a high priest, kind, innocent, undefiled, having been separated from sinners and exalted above the heavens, who does not need as those high priests to go up slaughter offerings day by day, first for his own sins and then for those of the people. For this he did once for all when he offered up himself. For the Torah appoints as high priests men who have weakness, but the word of the oath which came after the Torah appoints the Son, having been perfected forever. Chapter 8 Now the summary of what we are saying is, we have such a high priest, 
who is seated at the right hand of the throne of the greatness in the heavens, and who serves in the set-apart place, and of the true tent, which Yahuwah set up, and not man. For every high priest is appointed to offer both gifts and slaughters, so it was also necessary for this one to have somewhat to offer. For indeed, if he were on earth, he would not be a priest, since there are priests who offer the gifts according to the Torah, who serve a copy and shadow of the heavenly, as Moshe was warned when he was about to make the tent. For he said, See that you make all according to the pattern shown you on the mountain. But now he has obtained a more excellent service inasmuch as he is also mediator of a better covenant, which was constituted on better promises. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then no place would have been sought for a second. For finding fault with them, he says, See, the days are coming, says Yahuwah, when I shall conclude with the house of Yisrael and with the house of Yehuda a renewed covenant, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Mitzrayim, because they did not continue in my covenant, and I disregarded them, says Yahuwah, because this is the covenant that I shall make with the house of Yisrael after those days, says Yahuwah, giving my laws in their mind and I shall write them on their hearts, and I shall be their Elohim, and they shall be my people, and they shall by no means teach each one his neighbor, and each one his brother, saying, No, Yahuwah, because they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest of them, because I shall forgive their unrighteousness, and their sins, and their lawlessness I shall no longer remember. By saying renewed, he has made the first old, but what becomes old and growing aged is near disappearing. Chapter 9 Now the first covenant indeed had regulations of worship and the earthly set-apart place. For a tent was prepared, the first part in which was the lampstand and the table and the showbread which is called the set-apart place. The part of the tent which is called most set-apart, to which belonged the golden censer and the ark of the covenant, overlaid on all sides with gold in which were the golden pot that held the manna, and the rod of Aharon that budded, and the tablets of the covenant, and above it the cherubim of esteem were overshadowing the place of atonement, about which we do now speak in detail. And these having been prepared like this, the priests always went into the first part of the tent, accomplishing the services. But into the second part, the high priest went alone once a year, not without blood, which he offered for himself, and for sins of ignorance of the people, the set-apart spirit signifying this, that the way into the most set-apart place was not yet made manifest while the first tent has a standing, which was a parable for the present time in which both gifts and slaughters are offered, which are unable to perfect the one serving as to his conscience, only as to foods and drinks and different washings and fleshly regulations until a time of setting matters straight. But Messiah, having become a high priest of the coming good matters, through the greater and more perfect tent, not made with hands, that is not of this creation, entered into the set-apart place once for all, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, having obtained everlasting redemption. For if the blood of bulls and goats and ashes of a heifer, sprinkling the defiled, sets apart for the cleansing of the flesh... How much more shall the blood of the Messiah, who through the everlasting Spirit offered himself unblemished to Elohim, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living Elohim? And because of this, he is the mediator of a renewed covenant, so that death, having taken place for redemption of the transgressions under the first covenant, those who are called might receive the promise of the everlasting inheritance. For where a covenant is, it is necessary for the death of the covenanted one to be established, for a covenant over those dead is firm, since it is never valid while the covenanted one is living. Therefore not even the first covenant was instituted without blood, for when, according to Torah, every command had been spoken by Moshe to all the people, he took the blood of calves and goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the book itself and all the people, saying, this is the blood of the covenant which Elohim commanded you. 
and in the same way he sprinkled with blood both the tent and all the vessels of the service. And according to the Torah, almost all is cleansed with blood, and without shedding of blood there is no forgiveness. It was necessary then that the copies of the heavenly ones should be cleansed with these, but the heavenly ones themselves with better slaughter offerings than these. For Messiah has not entered into a set-apart place made by hand, figures of the true, but into the heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of Elohim on our behalf. Not that he should offer himself often as the high priest enters into the set-apart place year by year with blood not his own. For if so, he would have to suffer often since the foundation of the world. But now he has appeared once for all at the end of the ages to put away sin by the offering of himself. And as it awaits men to die once and after this the judgment, so also the Messiah, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, shall appear a second time, apart from sin, to those waiting for him unto deliverance. Chapter 10 For the Torah, having a shadow of the good matters to come, and not the image itself of the matters, was never able to make perfect those who draw near with the same slaughter offerings which they offer continually year by year. Otherwise, would they not have ceased to be offered? Because those who served, once cleansed, would have had no more consciousness of sins. But in those offerings is a reminder of sins year by year, for it is impossible for blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. Therefore coming into the world, he says, Slaughtering and meal offering you did not desire, but a body you have prepared for me. In ascending offerings and offerings for sin you did not delight. Then I said, See, I come. In the roll of the book it has been written concerning me, to do your desire, O Elohim. Saying above, Slaughter and meal offerings and ascending offerings and offerings for sin you did not desire nor delight in, which are offered according to the Torah. Then he said, See, I come to do your desire, O Elohim. He takes away the first to establish the second. By that desire we have been set apart through the offering of the body of Yahshua Messiah once for all. And indeed, every priest stands day by day doing service and repeatedly offering the same slaughter offerings which are never able to take away sins. But he, having offered one slaughter offering for sins for all time, sat down at the right hand of Elohim waiting from that time onward until his enemies are made a footstool for his feet. For by one offering he has perfected for all time those who are being set apart. And the set-apart spirit also witnesses to us, for after having said before, This covenant that I shall make with them after those days, says Yahuwah, giving my laws into their hearts, and in their minds I shall write them, and their sins and their lawlessness I shall remember no more. Now where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer a slaughter offering for sin. So brothers, having boldness to enter into the set-apart place by the blood of Yahshua, by a new and living way which he instituted for us through the veil that is his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of Elohim, let us draw near with a true heart and completeness of belief, having our hearts sprinkled from a wicked conscience and our bodies washed with clean water. Let us hold fast the confession of our expectation without yielding, for he who promised is trustworthy. And let us be concerned for one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging, and so much more as you see the day coming near. For if we sin purposely, after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a slaughter offering for sins, but some fearsome anticipation of judgment and a fierce fire which is about to consume the opponents. Anyone who has disregarded the Torah of Moshe dies without compassion on the witness of two or three witnesses. How much worse punishment do you think shall he deserve who has trampled the son of Elohim underfoot? Counted the blood of the covenant by which he was set apart as common and insulted the spirit of favor. For we know him who has said, Vengeance is mine, I shall repay, says Yahuwah. And again, Yahuwah shall judge his people. It is fearsome to fall into the hands of the living Elohim. But remember the former days when after you were enlightened, you endured a great struggle with sufferings. On the one hand, you were exposed to reproaches and pressures. 
And on the other hand, you became sharers with those who were so treated. For you sympathized with me in my chains, and you accepted with joy the seizure of your possessions, knowing that you have a better and lasting possession for yourselves in the heavens. Do not then lose your boldness, which has great reward. For you have need of endurance, so that when you have done the desire of Elohim, you receive the promise. For yet a little while, he who is coming shall come and shall not delay, but the righteous shall live by belief. But if anyone draws back, my being has no pleasure in him. But we are not of those who draw back to destruction, but of belief to the preservation of life. Chapter 11 And belief is the substance of what is expected, the proof of what is not seen. For by this the elders obtained witness. By belief we understand that the ages were prepared by the word of Elohim, so that what is seen was not made of what is visible. By belief, Abel offered to Elohim a greater slaughter offering than Cain, through which he obtained witness that he was righteous, Elohim witnessing of his gifts, and through it, having died, he still speaks. By belief, Hanok was translated so as not to see death, and was not found because Elohim had translated him. For before his translation, he obtained witness that he pleased Elohim. But without belief, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to Elohim has to believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who earnestly seek him. By belief, Noah, having been warned of what was yet unseen, having feared, prepared an ark to save his house, through which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is according to belief. By belief, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he was about to receive as an inheritance, and he went out, not knowing where he was going. By belief, he sojourned in the land of promise as a stranger, dwelling in tents with Yitzhak and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking for the city having foundations, whose builder and maker is Elohim. By belief also, Sarah herself was enabled to conceive seed, and she bore a child when she was past the normal age, because she deemed him trustworthy who had promised. And so from one, and him as good as dead, were born as numerous as the stars of the heaven, as countless as the sand which is by the seashore. In belief, all these died, not having received the promises, but seeing them from a distance, welcomed and embraced them, and confessed that they were aliens and strangers on the earth. For those who speak this way make it clear that they seek a fatherland, and yet if they had indeed kept remembering that place from which they had come out, they would have had the chance to return. But now they long for a better place that is a heavenly Therefore Elohim is not ashamed to be called their Elohim, for he has prepared a city for them. By belief, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Yitzhak, and he who had received the promises offered up his only brought forth son, of whom it was said, In Yitzhak your seed shall be called, reckoning that Elohim was able to raise even from the dead, from which he received him back as a type. By belief, Yitzhak blessed Jacob and Esau concerning that which was to come. By belief, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed each of the sons of Yosef and did reverence on the top of his staff. By belief, Yosef, when he was dying, made mention of the outgoing of the children of Israel and gave orders concerning his bones. By belief, Moshe, having been born, was hidden three months by his parents because they saw he was a comely child and were not afraid of the sovereign's command. By belief, Moshe, having become great, refused to be called the son of the daughter of Pharaoh, choosing rather to be afflicted with the people of Elohim than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a time, deeming the reproach of Messiah greater riches than the treasures in Mitzrayim, for he was looking to the reward. By belief he left Mitzrayim, not fearing the wrath of the sovereign, for he was steadfast as seeing him who is invisible. By belief he performed the Pesach and the sprinkling of blood, lest he who destroyed the firstborn should touch them. 
by belief. They passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, and when the Mitzrites tried it, they were drowned. By belief, the walls of Jericho fell, having been surrounded for seven days. By belief, Rahab, the whore, did not perish with those who did not believe, having received the spies with peace. And what more shall I say? For the time would fail me to relate of Gideon, and Barak, and Simpson, and Yiftah, also of David, and Shemuel, and the prophets, who through belief overcame reigns, worked righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the power of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, became mighty in battle, put foreign armies to flight, women received back their dead by resurrection, and others were tortured, not accepting release, to obtain a better resurrection. And others had trial of mockings and floggings and more of chains and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were tried, they were sawn in two, they were slain with the sword. They went about in sheepskins, in goatskins, being in need, afflicted, mistreated, of whom the world was not worthy wandering in deserts and mountains and caves and holes of the earth, and having obtained witness through the belief, all these did not receive the promise. Elohim, having provided what is better for us, that they should not be made perfect apart from us. Chapter 12 We too, then, having so great a cloud of witnesses all around us, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily entangles us, and let us run with endurance the race set before us, looking to the Prince and Perfecter of our belief, Yeshua, who, for the joy that was set before Him, endured the stake, having despised the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of Elohim. For consider Him, who endured such opposition from sinners against Himself, lest you become weary and faint in your lives. You have not yet resisted unto blood striving against sin, and you have forgotten the appeal which speaks to you as sons. My son, do not despise the discipline of Yahuwah, nor faint when you are reproved by him. For whom Yahuwah loves, he disciplines and flogs every son whom he receives. If you endure discipline, Elohim is treating you as sons. For what son is there whom a father does not discipline? But if you are without discipline, of which all have become sharers, then you are illegitimate and not sons. Moreover, we indeed had fathers of our flesh disciplining us, and we paid them respect. Shall we not much rather be subject to the Father of spirits and live? For they indeed disciplined us for a few days, as seemed best to them. But he does it for our profit, so that we might share his apartness. And indeed, no discipline seems pleasant at the time, but grievous. But afterward, it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. So strengthen the hands which hang down and the weak knees, and make straight paths for your feet, lest the lame be turned aside, but instead to be healed. Pursue peace with all, and pursue a partness without which no one shall see the Master. See to it that no one falls short of the favor of Elohim, that no root of bitterness springing up causes trouble, by which many become defiled, lest there be anyone who whores or profane one, like Esau, who for a single meal sold his birthright. For you know that afterward, when he wished to inherit the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no place for repentance, though he sought it with tears." For you have not drawn near to a mountain touched and scorched with fire, and to blackness and darkness and storm, and a sound of a trumpet and a voice of words, so that those who heard it begged that no further word should be spoken to them, for they could not bear what was commanded. If even a beast touches the mountain, it shall be stoned or shot through with an arrow. And so fearsome was the sight that Moshe said, I exceedingly fear and tremble. But you have drawn near to Mount Zion, and to the city of the living Elohim, to the heavenly Jerusalem, to myriads of messengers, to the entire gathering and assembling of the firstborn, having been enrolled in heaven, 
and to Elohim, the judge of all, and to the spirits of righteous men made perfect, and to Yeshua, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling, which speaks better than the blood of Habel. Take heed not to refuse the one speaking. For if those did not escape who refused the warning on earth, much less we who turn away from him from heaven, whose voice shook the earth then, but now he has promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not only the earth, but also the heaven. And this, yet once more, makes clear the removal of what is shaken, as having been made, so that the unshaken matters might remain. Therefore, receiving an unshakable reign, let us hold the favor through which we serve Elohim pleasingly, with reverence and awe. For indeed, our Elohim is a consuming fire. Chapter 13 Let brotherly love continue. Do not forget to receive strangers. For by so doing, some have unwittingly entertained messengers. Remember the prisoners as if chained with them, and those being mistreated, since you yourselves also are in the body. Let marriage be respected by all, and the bed be undefiled. But Elohim shall judge those who whore, and adulterers. Let your way of life be without the love of silver, and be satisfied with what you have. For he himself has said, I shall never leave you nor forsake you. So that we boldly say, Yahuwah is my helper. I shall not fear what man shall do to me. Remember those leading you, who spoke the word of Elohim to you. Consider the outcome of their behavior and imitate their belief. Yahshua Messiah is the same yesterday and today and forever. Do not be borne about by various and strange teachings, for it is good for the heart to be established by favor, not with foods, which have not profited those who have been occupied with them. We have a slaughter place from which those serving the tent have no authority to eat. For the bodies of those beasts whose blood is brought into the set-apart place by the high priest for sin are burned outside the camp. And so Yahshua also suffered outside the gate to set apart the people with his own blood. Let us then go to him outside the camp bearing his reproach, for we have no lasting city here, but we seek the one coming. Through him then, let us continually offer up a slaughter offering of praise to Elohim. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. And do not forget to do good and to share, for with such slaughter offerings Elohim is well pleased. Obey those leading you and be subject to them, for they watch for your lives as having to give account. Let them do so with joy and not groaning, for that would be of no advantage to you. Pray for us, for we trust that we have a good conscience, desiring to behave well in every way. But I particularly encourage you to do this, that I might be restored to you the sooner. And the Elohim of peace, who brought up our master Yeshua from the dead, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his desire working in you what is pleasing in His sight, through Yahshua Messiah, to whom be esteemed forever and ever. Amen. And I call upon you, brothers, bear with the word of encouragement, for I have written to you in few words. Know that brother Timotheos has been released, with whom I shall see you if he comes shortly. Greet all those leading you, and all the set-apart ones. Those from Italy greet you. Favor be with you all. Amen. The Book of James, Yaakov, Chapter 1 Yaakov, a servant of Elohim and of the Master Yeshua Messiah, to the twelve tribes who are in the dispersion, greetings. My brothers, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the proving of your belief works endurance. And let endurance have a perfect work, so that you be perfect and complete, lacking in naught. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of Elohim, who gives to all generously and without reproach, and it shall be given to him. But he should ask in belief, not doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. 
For that man should not think that he shall receive whatever from the master. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. And let the lowly brother boast in his exaltation, but the rich in his humiliation, because as a flower of the field he shall pass away. For the sun rose with burning heat and withered the grass, and its flower fell, and its pretty appearance perished. So also the rich man shall fade away in his ways. Blessed is the man who does endure trial, for when he has been proved, he shall receive the crown of life which the Master has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is enticed, I am enticed by Elohim. For Elohim is not enticed by evil matters, and he entices no one. But each one is enticed when he is drawn away by his own desires and trapped. Then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it has been accomplished, brings forth death. Do not go astray, my beloved brothers. Every good gift and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no change nor shadow of turning. Having purposed it, he brought us forth by the word of truth for us to be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. So then, my beloved brothers, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man does not work the righteousness of Elohim. Therefore, put away all filthiness and overflow of evil, and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your lives, and become doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. Because if anyone is a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like a man who looks at his natural face in a mirror, for he looks at himself and goes away, and immediately forgets what he was like. But he that looked into the perfect Torah, that of freedom, and continues in it, not becoming a hearer that forgets, but a doer of work, this one shall be blessed in his doing of the Torah. If anyone among you thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his own heart, this one's religion is worthless. Clean and undefiled religion before the Elohim and Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained from the world. Chapter 2 My brothers, do not hold the belief of our Master Yeshua Messiah, the Master of esteem with partiality. For if there should come into your meeting place a man with gold rings and a splendid robe, and there should also come in a poor one dressed in rags, and you pay attention to the one wearing the splendid robe and say to him, You sit here in a good place, and say to the poor one, You stand there, or sit here by my feet. Have you not discriminated among yourselves, and become judges with wicked thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers, has Elohim not chosen the poor of this world, rich in belief, and heirs of the reign which he promised to those who love him? But you have shown disrespect towards the poor man. Do not the rich oppress you and drag you into the courts? Do they not blaspheme that good name by which you were called? If you truly accomplish this sovereign law according to the scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. You do well. But if you show partiality, you commit sin, being found guilty by the Torah as transgressors. For whoever shall guard all the Torah and yet stumble in one point, he is guilty of all. For he who said, do not commit adultery, also said, do not murder. Now if you do not commit adultery, but you do murder, you have become a transgressor of Torah. So speak and so do as those who are to be judged by a Torah of freedom. For the judgment is without compassion to the one who has shown no compassion, and compassion boasts over judgment. My brothers, what use is it for anyone to say he has belief but does not have works? This belief is unable to save him. And if a brother or sister is naked and in need of daily food, but one of you says to them, 
Go in peace. Be warmed and be filled. But you do not give them the bodily needs. What use is it? So also belief, if it does not have works, is in itself dead. But someone might say, You have belief and I have works. Show me your belief without your works, and I shall show you my belief by my works. You believe that Elohim is one. You do well. The demons also believe and shudder. But do you wish to know, O foolish man, that the belief without the works is dead? Was not Avraham our father declared right by works when he offered Yitzhak his son on the slaughter place? Do you see that the belief was working with his works, and by the works the belief was perfected? And the scripture was filled, which says, Abraham believed Elohim, and it was reckoned to him for righteousness. And he called him, He who loves Elohim. You see then that a man is declared right by works, and not by belief alone. In the same way was not Rahab, the whore, also declared right by works when she received the messengers and sent them out another way. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so also the belief is dead without the works. Chapter 3 Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers, knowing that we shall receive greater judgment, for we all stumble in many matters. If anyone does not stumble in word, he is a perfect man, able to bridle the entire body. Look, we put bits in the mouths of horses for them to obey us, and we turn their body. Look at the ships too. Although they are so big and are driven by strong winds, they are turned by a very small rudder wherever the pilot intends. So too the tongue is a little member, yet boasts greatly. See how a little fire kindles a great forest, and the tongue is a fire, the world of unrighteousness. Among our members the tongue is set, the one defiling the entire body and setting on fire the wheel of life, and it is set on fire by Gehenom. For every kind of beast and bird of reptile and creature of the sea is tamed and has been tamed by mankind. But no man is able to tame the tongue, It is unruly, evil, filled with deadly poison. With it we bless our Elohim and Father, and with it we curse men who have been made in the likeness of Elohim. Out of the same mouth proceed blessing and cursing. My brothers, this should not be so. Does the fountain send forth the sweet and the bitter from the same opening? My brothers, is a fig tree able to bear olives or grapevine figs? So neither is a fountain able to make salt and sweet water. Who is wise in understanding among you? Let him show by his good behavior his works in meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter jealousy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast against and lie against the truth. This is not the wisdom coming down from above, but it is earthly unspiritual, demonic. For where jealousy and self-seeking are, there is confusion in every foul deed. But the wisdom from above is first clean, then peaceable, gentle, ready to obey, filled with compassion and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace.